through expanding consciousness you are able to connect to other entities whether it is indirectly directly through intuition through dream state or any of these variances that allow communication to be brought upon on such a higher level but what mechanism allows this communication what mechanism allows your heart to connect to others and that is the challenge of most human beings is to focus into the energy of singularity however those of you who have completed this assignment are much wanting to work in the energies of co-creation and you'd say, Ryan Council, that is a simple answer. You have told us before that we must create these groups. Many things that we perceive are not actually true. Truth is in the full perception around the object that you are perceiving. You are only perceiving one side of the object when you are looking at it. Third dimension gives you only one side at a time. Greetings to you all, this is Aridif, that is A-R-I-D-I-F, and this is it spelled. There are many of you who are stepping forward with your own queries and desires. You may begin questions at your leisure. Brian? Hello there, my friend. Greetings. This is Brian. Yes, greetings you? to you, Brian. We are fine, and you are loved. Yes, my friend. Um, I was asking about your civilizations and even Trebs. Um, do you, at this time in our Earth history, are we allowed to do site-to-site -site transfer for physical, um, going physically to your ships, or is that something down the, in the far-flung future? At for Trebel Yitani's race specifically, they do not connect humans upon the physical level. For our race, we have been extensively spot throughout your entirety of history. We have connected to you as recently as 1,100 years ago in your past, but have not projected into future physical interactions until those who are more physically looking as you do will connect you for your comfort level ability. The first race that will connect you are those that are of the hybrid race connections that are appearing more as you physically it is a comfort level concept of those who are begin initiation of physical interactions. That's beautiful. Thank you very much, my friend. Yes, you are loved. Hi, Aradith. This is Sabrina. Yes, greetings, Sabrina. Gr greetings. Um, my question, I don't know if you can answer this or Treb. Uh, my question was, I wanted to know about my possible future um, life, like the one that I have the highest connection to? Yes, first of all, let us express this concept, that each moment when you are changing your vibration and energy, you are connecting to different probabilities. In the probabilities of the last eight months of your lifetime, there is one entity who stands forward the most within probabilities of connection for future incarnations. This entity is one that you would perceive as humanoid and similar to those of the perfect Pleiadian race. In your perception, they are appearing to be perfect humans, but in this concept, we are connecting to these entities from the Pegasus constellation. They are not in a star that is named, or at least one that is named in the NCH category within your star charts. In this constellation, there is this energy from this incarnation in which you are most apt to be connected to. This entity most specifically connects to you not only in your dream state, not only in your day-to-day -day awakened consciousness, but often appears to you as a glitter of light within the corner of your eye in gold and silver variety. 
this entity is consistently making contact with you. But in this concept, we also assure you that as your vibration change, this entity perhaps will move outside of the probability of being your future incarnation, but this is up to you completely. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Hello. Yes, greetings to you. Um, this is Naida. My question is, uh, last week I have been around the beings in my dream, but it feels very, very physically. They were very, very tall. Um, I just don't remember the, the faces, but I had very serious conversation with them. Even though when I open my eyes, um, I feel very, very busy. Um, I couldn't even walk. I just want to know uh, what kind of beings they were, what was the conversation. Thank you. Yes, first of all, when we see entities that are connecting to you, there are three separate races. Two of these, out of your perception, would be tall in comparison to the average human height. Both of these entities are ones that are humanoid or bipedal in nature, one of them being what you would call a hybrid race, the other being a reptilian human hybrid. Both of these entities are connecting more deeply to you, but when you are looking at the physical state or what appears to be physical, there is quite a difference between your sleep state connections or your in-between sleep state connections and what you would perceive as a fourth density connection. Mind you that all of you are in the fourth density consciousness availability in this moment, but most of you decide or choose to live in the third density the majority of the time. During the time in which you are not considered to be third density, you are bouncing your own consciousness in a higher level of vibration to match that of the nature of your consciousness in the fourth density. Therefore, the physical attributes of your body are then enhanced into fourth density. Therefore, you are able to connect physically in the fourth density to these entities. In your third state uh, mind or consciousness of mind, you would interpret or remember this interaction as being dreamlike or non-physical, but in fact, it is quite physical. It is your fourth density body connecting to their fourth density self. And in this interaction, out of both of the races that are tall, you have had one fourth density physical connection to a race. These races, uh, we are not sure of the name, but the vibrational is fit out of the area that you would call Ursa Minora, a constellation between the first and third brightest star. It is one that is approximately 3,400 light years from you and would not be visible to your naked eye unless a telescope was involved. These entities are ones that are only a projection of consciousness that are manifesting in front of you through your oversoul variety. It is not an outward connection, nor is most of your connections as a collective or human experience that you feel, associate with, or experience yourself. When you are connecting to one entity or one race of entities, it is often because of your oversoul's connection. When you are connecting to these entities through your oversoul, you are able to experience an energy that is quite larger than yourself. Therefore, it feels to be overwhelming or even dreamlike in nature. Let us assure you that when you are feeling this and in your intuitive or intuitive status, you are truly connecting physically to them. Allow your intuition to serve you. Open your intuition with trust in nature of connecting to these entities and you will do so more frequently. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask the people that have asked their questions to leave and give space to others. And also I would like to see if anybody on Jim's side would like to ask anything at this point. Perhaps you can prepare and we will take one more from our side, which is Jag. Greetings. Greetings to you. 
My question would be if there is any relevant information that needs to come through at this time. Understanding that the word relevant is of different importance or variety to others, in which way do you mean this? Relevant to yourself, relevant to this group collective, or relative to the entirety of the Earth collective consciousness? And in what way do you mean coming through from your own guidance, from entities within your oversoul, or any general information? Yes, thank you for that clarification. For myself personally, and the guidance systems that are available to me at this moment in time. Yes, there is information that comes through you from what you perceive as a spirit guide. This entity is one that is non-physical to your perception and is living in between a physical incarnation and of Earth experience. This entity itself is bringing forward information that consistent with your own desire to be more relevant in your perception of intuition and or connection says that without a certain level of trust or belief within yourself information will not come through more specifically when you are trying to meditate when you are trying to connect you must place an intent with belief in your own ability beforehand and during the time that when you are meditating to use this visualizative technique that will help you allow more clarity of your yeah, connection yeah. first of all Look into your own third eye projection, and when you are seeing your third eye, you are connecting an upside-down triangle. Project this into the visualization of your third eye in the color of indigo, and in your throat chakra, you are using a square shape that is the color of blue. In your heart chakra, you are using um, a two-sided object. A flat design that is only two lines that intersect and with that placing it in your heart chakra with the color of green using this will help allow a bridge of information and energy to project more energy into your third eye in the third eye area there is a lack of connection to certain energies because of your belief systems in your own ability this will help open the third eye more so and make the energy and information more clear to you thank you Greetings, Ardiff. This is Brother J.C. Ibarra. Yes, greetings to you. I we... wanted to say thank you very much, and then I also want to ask, what was the reasoning for waking me up at 4.44 a.m. today, um, and if you could expand upon what it is you guys are doing with uh, having me meet all the channelers that we are inspired by physically, in our 3D timeline. Thank you. Yes, thank you as well. And first of all, let us express, it is not us that is awaking you. It is not us that is connecting you to these entities. This is a desire within yourself. When you are desiring to connect to these entities, therefore, to expand your own work in connection or channeling state, this is what helps manifest the desire. What you are doing is using our energy of love and acceptance, using that in order to help you manifest these capabilities. And in the 4.44 a.m., it is not myself that comes to you to wake you up. It is yourself being excited of the upcoming energy in our interaction, therefore using this to manifest a meeting with my energy in order to help you manifest not only your connection, to the channeled state, your connection to other entities who are channeling in this moment, but also to help you open up your energy to a degree in which you are still finding more growth within. In this interaction, what all of you are doing when you call upon us is not using our own energy specifically for one orientation. You are excited to be in our presence. You are using that excitement to fuel yourself. But if you desire, you are able to use an intent that allows our energy to connect to yours more deeply and using this for a manifestation of your desire. This is what you are doing, Justin, specifically when you are connecting to your own energy into your own heart's desire. This is what allows the information and energy to flow more so. Thank you. Hey, hello, uh, Audrey. It's Gabriel here. Yes, greetings, Gabriel. Yes, and I got the idea to ask you about my Pleiadian family, if you can share anything, because I've 
I met them once in my bedroom, two entities. If you're able to share anything about that. Yes, first let us express that when you are using the term Pleiadian, this is a large blanket term. This is a term that encompasses thousands of separate races within one area of what you perceive as time-space. In the Pleiadian region, tens of thousands of races are interacting or dividing themselves amongst one another in order to achieve a collective consciousness that the Earth entities call Pleiadian in nature. So if you are understanding the larger um, energy that comes with the blanketing of the term Pleiadian, what you are perceiving is that there are three separate races that are connecting to you from this Pleiadian region. One of these entities are what you perceive as the perfect human Pleiadian. The other is an insectoid race that is connecting to you. The other is one in which is a hybrid of gray and human. When you are perceiving the specific vision or specific meeting, we are not reading which of these three that it is. But the one in which you are interacting with the most are the humanoids and the human gray hybrids. Both of these entities have not only manifested themselves through a connection of your dream state, but have also interacted in the full density way. By your own desire to connect to these entities more deeply, by a flushing out of any belief systems of yours that tend to be limiting yourself to be able to connect to these entities, this is what will help you open up not only a clearer or better communication, but also a more frequent one in the physical nature. Thank you. So, so the memory of the physical meeting, could that help me connect to them as well? Because they left, I saw them for about four or five seconds in my bedroom. Yes. And I feel they are family. Yes, any time that you are bringing forth a memory of fondness, any time that you are bringing forth a memory with any vibrational status that allows you to connect more deeply and more intimately with their specific vibration signature will be of assistance to you. When you are thinking of the specific moment when you are feeling the specific energy and emotion, when you are connecting to the visual attributes of these entities, it will always help your connection go more deeply. Also, um, something that Rob has used within his own incarnation in the beginning to help him connect more deeply to Trevor Yitney in a channeled state is this. By perceiving and visualizing the area of stars in which they reside, um, specifically with Trevor Yitney, it is the Aragai constellation, then zooming inward towards the Capellan region. Due to the nature of the Capellan region, it is actually from your perception, one star, but in the true nature of reality, it is four separate stars zooming in past the one star perspective, going into the largest red dwarf within the four star quadrant or four star system, then allowing him to pinpoint more accurately, more deeply and more intimately with the specific vibration of that collective race. We suggest that you do this also if you are looking to connect or more so with the perfect humanoids, then you will focus your energy upon Alcyon within the Pleiades region. If you desire to connect yourself to the humanoid gray hybrid race, then you are connecting more so to Electra. If you are looking to connect more so to the insectoid entities, then you are connecting to the star um, that is perceived to be Tigrid, or we at least believe this is how it is pronounced in your native language. Thank you. Thank you so much for that information. Yes, uh, you are next. Last. Next was Ellie to ask a question. What I think. Think. Hello, dear friend. It's yes, Ellie. greetings to you. Greetings. I am doing recently tomorrow a ritual, which will be like a magical ritual, but it is um, um, it is with the planets combined. So my question is, uh, what are the probabilities of this ritual to be successful? It will be one year long ritual. Six uh, points in the year uh, I will uh, perform this ritual. Yes, in this moment now, as you are speaking, the probability of making this magic um, ritual manifest in the way that you desire it is 12% to 15% probability. 
when you hear this number, you believe that this is very low, but we are seeing several tens of thousands of probabilities. So in these probabilities, to have this percentage is quite a positive concept. What we can tell you is that at the six points of intersections in which you are performing the certain attributes of rituals that will help you move forward in your manifestation to make sure that you are aligned in both positivity and excitement in those six intersecting points and your manifestational abilities will rise above your 32%. If you are making this excitement a priority one in your existence above all other things in your life, it will raise even more so to a 43%. Understanding that if you are having 10,000 specific probabilities and you are using a 43% probability, this means that 4,300 out of the 10,000 are probable of landing towards success. This is a very high ratio. And in that way, the more excitement and focus you have, the more energy that you place upon making this manifest in your desire for each day, even when you are not doing a ritual, will increase it, therefore, much more. Thank you. Thank you. Love and light. Yes. Love and to you as well, and you are loved. Sheer. Hello, greetings and happy Shavuot. Yes, greetings to you also. Yes, I want to ask you about the fourth blood moon and if it's going to affect me and my channeling. Yes, in what specific way do you mean effect or do you mean any effect at all? Any effect at all? Yes. First of all, when you are looking at what a blood moon is, you understand the scientific nature behind the mechanics of a blood moon in your physical reality. But when you are looking upon it in a non-physical, it is much different. Just as the last entity who has asked the question, they are understanding the nature of collective consciousnesses of solar system. In your own specific fourth blood moon of this age, in the specific energy and the way the moon consciousness interacts with the human consciousness and the earth entirety collective as well as all of the bodies within your solar system collective this alignment is one that is very special it brings forward not only a greater awareness of your unconscious thoughts not only a greater awareness of your non-physical attributes but also bridging yourself to a better connection to your higher self and entities within this. So in the way that it will specifically allow or specifically affect your energy is opening up more channels within the channels that you have already opened, making those channels more clear, but more so specifically, it will allow you an opening to connect to one entity whose energy is less prioritized in your excitement of unconscious level and bring it to the forefront. This energy in our perception is one <clears throat> that will be very useful for your own energy, but also very useful for others if you were to bring this forward and to share more publicly. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Jim. So, Jim, you are, you are muted. You need to unmute. Oh, all right. Yeah. How's that? Yes. Um, Mark wants to ask a question from the room here. Yes, greetings to Jim also. Thank you. This is Mark. I would like to thank you for being with us today. And I also have a question about our planet, the Earth. What or who developed the Nazca lines, and if you can tell us anything about that. Yes, first of all, Thank let you. us express a greetings yes. to you also, and let us express that in the connection of what you're perceiving as the Nazca lines, this is the collective energy of three different races. When you are looking into the concept of the Anunnaki entities, these entities are the first ones who inhabited the Earth, collective consciousness manifesting in 
and changing the specific portions of DNA within the human collective that allowed you to exchange second density consciousness for third, jump-starting yourself. But in that collective energy, there are also two more races that are not physically affecting the Nazca lines, but are non-physically. These entities that you perceive as Anunnaki are portions of two different collective energies. So you have the Anunnaki energy, which is at the forefront and the foremost energy of specifically and physically interacting with the lines in order to make a geometric pattern within your Earth collective to allow them to navigate more easily, but you also have what you're perceiving as the feminine, Pleiadian, androgynous collective, and also what you are perceiving as the ancient reptilians. What the Anunnaki were, were a combination of these two races. First of all, the Pleiadian feminine race was segregating themselves from a small portion, therefore becoming the Anunnaki. They wish to explore their masculine energy more deeply and diverge from the main group after pushing forward and moving more so into their own energy, trying to become more masculine and separate themselves and what most of you would perceive as either the Luciferian project or the disconnection accord, all of them connected into inadvertently connecting their own DNA to the ancient reptilian DNA. Therefore, when you see the lines, they have been utilized by several hundred races, but were originated by the first race that comes to interact with humans as you understand this, and these entities in your tongue are called the Anunnaki. Thank you. Sharon? Oh, thank you. Um, hello, <laughs> my name is Greetings. Sharon. <laughs> Greetings to you. Um, I have really active sleepwalking, <laughs> and it's become more prevalent, and I was told by Jakur in another session that it was related to a galactic sister of some sort, another entity. I was wondering if you could give me some more information about that, and also if there are any messages that could be helpful for me from my higher self. Thank you. Yes, first of all, let us address the first issue of sleepwalking. Upon your planetary consciousness, sleepwalking is most prevalent for two reasons. One, because you are connected non-physically to another entity very deeply. It is what some of you call twin flames, what some of you call counterparts and oversoul activity, but what it is truly is another entity within your oversoul that is either directly a vibrationally the same as yourself or directly vibrationally the opposite. Therefore, it is much as two opposite puzzle pieces connecting into one energy. When you are connecting to these entities, the energy of themselves comes within your physical body. Um, some of you are exchanging energies into their physical bodies during sleep state. Some of you will manifest this outward as bipolar disease or even schizophrenia. In your case, you are manifesting it outwards as sleepwalking. The other scenario in which sleepwalking occurs is when you are asleep and in your consciousness connected to your physical body, what you are doing in the dream state is then manifested outward into the physical body. Your attachment to the physical body is stronger than the average connection, and this is why it allows the movements of dream state to be manifested out in the physical body. But with your case specifically, your energy tied to this entity, tied to the energetic connection to this entity is what is causing this. If you are looking for a message from your higher self, it is this. There is a great deal of looking inwards upon yourself with judgment in certain social scenarios. When you are connecting to other people, when you are sharing yourself from your heart, when you are desiring to make friends or connect to new people, there is a great uh, unconscious, subconscious, as well as conscious fear. There is a part of you that is desiring to be accepted and a part of you that does not feel as if you are being accepted. In that scenario, when you are connecting to new entities, try to remind yourself of your own divinity. Try to remind yourself that you are the one who is creating these connections to be had. Therefore, any judgment that comes from these entities to you is not truly something that can affect your energy unless your belief allows it. 
try to remind yourself that as much as some of your beliefs in psychic protection, you must place an energetic wall outside of yourself that only allows love and acceptance but does not allow judgment. But before you are able to do this more permanently, you must do this with yourself. Allow acceptance within yourself, allow love within yourself, and when you do find yourself in a vibrational thought pattern that is not resonant with what you are, do not judge yourself in that moment. Do not hold on to that unforgiving nature that you will when you are looking within. This can also be helpful to all who are here within the collective consciousness this day. Thank you, and understand more than anything, you are loved. Thank you. Yes. This is Hayan. Yes, greetings. I want to ask... Greetings. I want to ask about drumming, which is my highest passion. Yes. And maybe if you can talk about it a little bit general, like is it a universal thing, and uh, a little bit individual, about uh, if I have past lives where I used to drum, or you know, if you can tell me something about that. Yes, first yeah, of all, first let us express to you this that when you are connecting to the concept of drumming, it is a concept that is deeply ingrained within all human DNA. The sound of music itself is one thing that either activates you in a positive way or negative way, pending on your beliefs and polarity and energy. But the reason it is so strong for all of your purpose and intent and purposes or experiences is this, that as a second density being, you used your nature sounds in order to help guide you into realizations. After exchanging your second density consciousness to third density consciousness, you utilize the sounds that you had created within yourselves and begin to create these instruments to emulate. What you are doing is creating a natural, archaic rhythm within your drums, within your instruments, in order to fulfill an energy that you desire very greatly. It is affecting the human collective because of the jump of consciousness from second to third and the shortcut that the Anunnaki had placed within changing your DNA. Your growth had come at a very short time period for the rate of natural evolution for your species. Therefore, filling in this vibrational difference with the drumming, filling it in with your native sound was what helped you allow a more conscious effort towards integrating consciousness and a more conscious effort in integrating sound variety into your daily existence. Understanding you yourself have been a drummer amongst many incarnations, amongst many different uh, separate segregated countries or uh, time periods as you would perceive this, and different ethnicities, then it allows you to understand the nature of your own desire for drumming. Now, when you are experiencing drumming in this incarnation, the desire to drum, the act of drumming itself, it brings forward almost a channel-like state in certain instances. When you are letting go of yourself, when you are letting go of the sense of self and accepting and connecting to your higher self and oversoul, this is what allows you specifically, but also many of you, to be able to play your instrument in an advantageous way of higher self connecting directly to the music. It feels as if you are in a trance, if time itself is let go, and you are truly in the rhythm of the music. This occurs as a portion of your higher self is being brought forward to incorporate all entities who are excited of and connected of in your oversoul to that one bass rhythm. Music runs thickly through the veins of human collective consciousness and truly thickly through your native entities amongst all continents. So accepting your heritage of music, understanding and allowing the feeling of music to vibrate within you will be a great bridge for you to help build your other connections in the intuitive sense. We congratulate you for this. You are loved. Thank you. That explains why I love every type of drumming. Yes, you are playing every type of drumming within your experience. Yes, yes. And on behalf of the people of Yukulu, because I don't think anyone will ask this, do you have anything to say about 
the co-creation we are doing with Gertrude here? We are not we are hearing not the exact, exact words. Exact we word. hear the word co-creation and what is after co-creation. The co um, he was asking is it do you have uh, any opinions or any comments about uh, the co-creation what we're doing here in Hukolo? Yes, first of all wish, Yes, first of all we wish to express a great gratitude to all of you. When you are experiencing a collective consciousness upon this scale about any certain idea, you are helping allow an energy to be created. You are also connecting to energies in which have already been manifested or created by others and tapping yourself into that energy. The more excitement that individually you bring to this collective, the more excited and expanded the collective may receive. In your own specific work, in your own interactions, you have all enriched one another's life with love, one another's life with excitement, and this is what experience as a human entity is meant to be. When you are experiencing anything, whether it be the worst day of your life to the greatest and all in between, this is being fed to your oversoul. The oversoul does not see in polarity as your fractal consciousness day-to-day -day self does. When your oversoul is connecting to the experiences, be it bad or be it good, it is appreciating an enjoy of experience. Your human collective is now expanding outward to other planetary collectives in order to co-create experiences just for this small collective. When you are looking at your human colony collective, you have allowed yourself to embrace the connection of one another, to expand your connection into other planetary collectives and co-create amongst the larger level. This is something that is phenomenal with the human collective that you are helping others become excited for and that others are being able to connect to your energy and also the planetary collectives of others. We congratulate you for your success in the co-creational magnitude of greatness within all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? I have one question if that's okay. Yes. Uh, my name's Alan. It's nice to meet you. Yes. Greetings to you, Alan. Um, I'm we are not hearing the voice as of any more. I was just wondering, do you have any messages for me personally? Yes. In my own consciousness, there is nothing specifically for me to tell you, but if I am looking at your energy in the way that you would perceive. I am looking at tens and thousands of different layers of energy. They are intersecting and interacting with one another. If you are desiring one specific concept or a specific idea, I will be able to find that energy and give you something more valid or more tangible. Okay. Um, well, I think I'll pass it. I'll, I'll let someone else speak for now because I'm... My mind's let going us to be express, like for one moment, let us express this, that if your desire is to receive a message from an entity within your oversoul or to connect to an entity that is connecting to your oversoul, we will say that there are many entities in this moment. One entity specifically steps forward and expresses greetings to you, and it also expresses that in your dream state, they have connected to you for at least two of your months. When you are looking at your month lineage in two months, you are seeing a certain pattern of different thoughts in which are not normal to the uh, perhaps negative thinking of your own. If your desire to open this connection more deeply is there, place an intent to connect with a longe, L-O-N-J-E-E, -E, longe entities from what you're perceiving as the Medusa constellation or uh, perhaps it is not called the Medusa, but it is embodying the picture of Medusa, and within that constellation, the Longi are willing and desiring to connect you more deeply in dream state. Open your intent before sleep state. This will allow more vivid uh, co-creation in your sleep state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Yes, you are loved. So, hi, my name is JD. Yes, greetings to you. Yeah. Is. Can intelligence be measured in some kind of percent, percent, or is it measurable? In what intelligence are you speaking of? The audio connection um, cut outward before you express percentage of intelligence. You're Sorry, you disappeared. Breaking up. For me too. Yeah. So. If you can hear me now, then uh, my question would be on a human, let's say an average human, what is the, could it be uh, measured, the intelligence of a human being? Yes, first of all, let us express this concept to you. In the way that humans perceive intelligence, we do not perceive intelligence in this fashion. In our perception, there is no such thing as intelligence. There is clarity of thought, clarity of heart, clarity of intuition, clarity of interaction. In those formats, there is ways to interpret and to perceive, but even measuring these is an impossibility for our race. As we perceive, it is perceptions and belief that orient your reality, the truths and non-truths within them. Therefore, to measure these types of flows of energy for any one person is an impossibility. What we do perceive is the individual signature in which all entities exist within and measure a flow of these concepts in a polarity of their beliefs, in a polarity of their own design, but not being able to place percentages or definitions or labels. Our race sees less division than your race does in many things, and this is why we do not uh, categorize in the same fashion you do. Understanding that when you are using your mind, it is very healthy, it is very good, it is not a negative thing. But when you use your mind only to interpret your reality, you are disassociating your heart, you are disassociating your intuition and flow of interaction, then all of the things within your mind are only one flow of energy, one perception. We cannot calculate uh, it being one flow, multiple flows, or orientations of flows, it is only an experience to be had. None of them are correct, none of them are incorrect, they are just experiences. Thank you. So, if I can just ask two more questions. Uh, so, when you say that human beings categorize themselves Lining? Oh, okay. Could I be heard? No, you're 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 breaking up. What? Why don't we allow others okay. to ask? And yeah, okay. okay. Yes. Um. Lining. Yes. Go ahead, Lining. Hello, Ardy. Yes. Greetings to you. Uh, your voice is very low, so if you are able to speak uh, either closer to your microphone mechanism or in a louder register. This would be greatly appreciated. Right, <clears throat> will do. Um, it's about fourth dimensional energy. Um, I can feel it more in my head than my body. How can I feel it more in my body as well as, as much as I do in my head? Yes, yes, we understand this concept. What we can tell you specifically of being able to feel more of this fourth density energy in your body instead of in your head alone is this. When you are opening yourself to the perception of fourth density, see how it affects your physical body. And we are not speaking large leaps of energy, large bolts of electricity, hot tingling sensations or scratching. We are meaning simply the smallest measure of movement the smallest measure of interactions and the smallest measure of reactions in your physical body. Understand, when you think of the fourth density consciousness, there are many energies that accompany this. If you understand where the chakra systems are within your physical body, it will give you a concept of where the energy comes through. When you begin to feel sensations in your lower legs or your 
um, anus region when you are thinking more specifically of the full density it means that there is a safety mechanism within you that is not allowing energy to be felt of the full density when you are feeling it in your genital region this means your second density your sense of sexuality your sense of excitement and thrill are not allowing the full density energy to be felt when you are feeling it in your solar plexus region below your heart what you are sensing is that the feel of your individual consciousness, the feeling of yourself separating yourself from the collective consciousness is what is restricting. But when you feel it in your heart, when you feel it anywhere higher than your heart chakra, this means you are allowing yourself to connect to full density. Then, through the smallest awareness of the smallest interactions or reactions, grow an intuitive awareness of where it is interacting become more aware of this and you will sense it more to your physical body. Awareness is the first key of understanding your physical body. Each time that any of you think of a certain idea or a certain concept, it will interact with one of your seven chakras within your physical body and when it does, it tells you a great deal about where you stand with that idea. Any concept you can bring forward, feel which chakra it manifests, sensations through and then you will be able to experience either your flow of energy or disconnection of energy when it comes to the concept to feel it within your head this is one region that we can express if you are using these terms to express that you mentally understand this then there is the uh, technique that we teach you but if you are saying you are feeling sensations of energy in your head it means you are already achieved an awareness of this as it is above your heart chakra, continue to utilize your awareness of it in your head and then try to place an intent to move it through your physical body and the fourth density will become a higher reality in all chakra systems. Thank you. Thank you. Maria. Hi, my name is Maria. And I have a question. Greeting to y'all. I have a question. Regard, uh, it's in regard of our higher, higher self. The first one is just yes and no. I was wondering, since I have a family in uh, a Pleiadian family, does that mean that a, a fraction of my soul or myself, however you want to name it, is living there at this now and moment? And the other question, how can I get my higher self interested to live in 3D world because it's hard to integrate it. Thank you so much. Love and light yes. to all. Yes. You are loved as well. First of all, let's just address the concept. If you understand that you have a Pleiadian family, if your heart resonates with the Pleiadian concept, if you feel the presence of Pleiadian energy, it is because there is one fractal consciousness within your oversoul that exists in this moment in that area understanding that all of your past lives, all of your future lives are happening in this moment. There is no, no such thing as linear time besides the point in which you are manifesting it for that experience. In third density, it is an experience that all of you can share. First of all, knowing that this entity is existing within your own oversoul at this moment will then allow you more energetic shift. Now, if you are expressing how your higher self may live with you within the third density, let us express that you are living from your higher self in the third density. That each of you are two individual energies, or at least the you that you understand is you, the you who lives in this environment, in this time, in this perception, focusing your energy in this now, you are coming in two parts of energy. We have expressed this concept as the upside-down ice cap or the upside-down polar cap. What you are is 80% of consciousness is above your energy. 20% is your lower fractalized consciousness. Now, in your lower fractal consciousness, the 20% of all that is of you in this life, in this time, in this incarnation, is experienced from day to day in your lower 20%. This is what we would call the lower fractalized consciousness. 
this is the portion of you that you dream, that cries, that experiences life in the day-to-day -day moment in what you perceive as the third density. The other version of yourself is what we would call your higher fractal consciousness. This is a portion of you that you, most of you would call your higher self that connects to you in intuition, that connects to you in dream state that you access when you are meditating and when you are connecting to what you're perceiving as your oversoul. This energy in the higher 80% of yourself is the direct connection to your oversoul. <clears throat> the oversoul is literally thousands of lifetimes of third density, hundreds of lives of fourth density, dozens of lives of fifth, and several lives in sixth density, plus all of the hundreds of thousands of incarnations as high second density, millions of lower second density, and trillions of first entities all combined. The Oversoul is every single essence of anything that you have been or will be combined into one. The Earth Collective itself holds 144,000 Oversouls and also 144,000 Twin Souls. When you look at Twin Souls, what they are is a separate entity from the Oversoul itself that was spawned during or birthed as a mitosis state entity reflecting the capability to change perspectives of one reality for the Oversoul itself. It is a mechanism that devises, collects, and brings forward to the awareness of the Oversoul all probabilities, infinite amounts of probabilities, and exchanges them. We understand this is a bit complex to speak of in a short time, but in this layout of consciousness, you are able to see how your lower fractal consciousness integrates to your higher self, how the higher self integrates into different portions of the Oversoul, how the Oversoul connects to the collective consciousness, therefore how you are able to experience all things. If you desire to bring some of your other entities that you perceive into your experience, you may manifest them physically, you may bring them forward, but you will never be able to incorporate that portion into your consciousness because the fractal consciousness that you are in both lower fractal consciousness and higher fractal consciousness is the you that you are. The only way to change this is change polarity, change your belief systems and your actions and your thoughts, and it will then resemble another entity that is within your oversoul, but to change them out or express them as one entity living another's life is something that in the mechanics of the oversoul is quite impossible. You may only emulate what you desire and change your vibration accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Slava is next, and then the gentleman that is with Jim. Yes. Hello. Greetings. Uh, I am interested in your perspective. Why hybrid children so important for humanity? And why hybrid children so important for me personally? And uh, can you share a little bit about my strongest spiritual connections? I know I will be contacted in, in future with some AT and hybrid children. Thank you. Yes, first of all, let us look at the concept of the importance of hybrid children. In a perspective, they are not important. In other in, uh, perspectives, they are very important. Each one of you individually may decide the importance of these entities. For entities who are not aware of hybrid children, for entities who have no excitement or desire to connect with them, they are not important at all, nor will they be a part of their existence. As you all create your own reality, this perception is brought forward by your own beliefs and excitements. Now with yourself, the reason that they are important to you is because of your excited state, because of your excitement and your actions into your excitements. Therefore, by placing excitement, connecting to that energy in each moment, and allowing these entities to interact with you more vividly, this will help allow these entities to be a part of your co-creation. When you experience it in this fashion, it brings forth a greater understanding and a great knowing a greater energy of all connections that you share with these children. Now, when you are speaking of your next connection or your greatest connection within the Oversoul, there are many. We are not able to express the depths of what will be held in your future as each choice that you make brings you to a new portion or a new probable experience to be had within your twin soul. 
but this being expressed, we will share with you. There are three connections within your oversoul that are very valid, that are very strong and are very uh, perhaps worthy of your attention and your perception. All three of these will allow a greater amount of communication and a great amount of understanding within yourself. Now, understanding that by finding what these connections are, we would be able to reflect this, but there is something within your beliefs that is not allowing us to connect more so to the energy of what and who they are. All you are able to do is express an intent to open yourself up to names, energies, and perceptions in your sleep state, and it will be brought in forward. Allow yourself to relax over what the connection is and enjoy the feeling of the connection, and this will bring you closer to more of the energy. Thank you. James? Raymond? Okay. Yeah, there was getting the mic there. Greetings and love to you, artists. Uh, greetings to you. We are hearing you, but in a broken pattern. How about now? Yes, this is much more clear. Is this better? Yes. All right, good. For, uh, for a little clarification on the Pleiadian star, for our, how we pronounce it, it is Pegeta. To let you know that. Yes. The question I have about myself is what have I been seeing very prophetic dreams about people passing on lately? People very close to me in heart. Yes. Let us express our own gratitude for the clarification and secondly what we can tell you of your specific dream state, your specific perception of those that you love who are passing, is in two different definitions. The very first definition is that the more that you are exchanging your consciousness into the fourth density integration, the more that you are seeing the instantaneous manifestations of your desires. Or, if you are disaligned or unaligned with a concept, the more that you manifest towards a disconnection of that in which you desire. This dream state is bringing forward the understanding of more clarity when it comes to yourself bringing forward things that excite you and separation of things that do not excite you. But when energy or fear or unalignment comes within your reality, then you will begin to dis disassociate yourself with the things that you do care of, the things that you are excited. This, in one format, is meaning that you are disconnecting certain attributes from your manifestational quality by bringing forward a worry or a fear of certain ideas. This is one meaning for two of the dream state. The second meaning in which it comes is that it is showing you that your experiences is consistently and vibrationally changing in all moments. That all of the things in which you have expected not to occur, such as losing those that you love around you, such as moving in certain attributes of your um, location or area in which you reside, all of these things that you would not expect will change within your experience. And the more that you align with yourself, the quicker they change. The more that you align yourself, it will change for things that are better. And in this way, it is something that is happening with all humans in the collective consciousness in this moment. When you are connecting to the dream state, remind yourself that if you place an alignment within yourself, that you will be able to manifest a more clarity of what the dream is trying to express to you. In this way, it is showing you these two concepts in this moment. But if you are able to relax yourself before dream state, remind yourself of the intent within yourself to clarify certain energies and certain degrees, it will bring forward more clear energy into your intuitive state. Your intuition is opening more so and more so each day. With the intuition opening, 
comes the concept of discernment. Many of you are very deeply invested in your beliefs of how I interpret certain concepts, I will receive them. But in this way, you must try to break down your barriers of what you see and what you experience and trying to find a more deep definition of these concepts. When you dream of yourself running from something, you will perceive that there is something in my life I am not facing. This is not always correct. In the dream state, what this represents to you is a desire to move forward, or it can mean a tiring of oneself from consistently doing something that is not being fruitful to them. And in that way, these dream states represent many different things, and opening yourself to an interpretation that is more fitting will help allow you an energy that has greater understanding. In this moment, the two definitions of what we have given you is what to look into within those specific dreams of losing others. So we thank you, and you are loved. Let us express that we have time in connection for one last question before we disconnect in this day. Thank you. Yes, thank you as well. You are loved. Um, David would be the last person. Yes. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we are able to hear you very clearly. Thank you, Arnif. Yes. Um, Trap told me that in order to uh, facilitate better channeling and better communication with extraterrestrials, it would be helpful if I also would uh, have a better communication with other people on Earth in my daily life. And I'm just wondering if you would have some practical tips how I could um, bring that about. Yes, first of all, in that energy, Trevor Yitney is very correct in that expression. As the smaller scale of all things lead to the larger scales, manifestations of what is within start without and then begin to cycle further outward. So in this way, your connection to yourself is important. Once this is achieved, a connection to others. Once this is achieved, others that are further away in your perspective, such as extraterrestrials, after that, etc., etc. So as you are connecting inward to outward, the tips that we will give you, not only, as Trevor Yitney expressed to you, the inward acceptance, the acceptance of yourself, the non-judgment of yourself, but also the belief systems that you hold that certain individuals can be rude or mean or hurtful or non-accepting. This belief in itself will bring forward a manifestation of more entities who are hurtful, who are not accepting, and who will judge you. The more that you let go of your perception on how certain members of the collective are, the less that you will see it in your existence. If you express deeply and with a true belief within yourself that if I am able to experience all in the collective, they will all be kind, they will all be loving, they will all be accepting and open-minded, you will start to experience it more so. Now we understand human consciousness is not able to take a great leap of faith on not all of you in one step. So what we suggest is start small as you express practical terminology or practical steps forward for the manifestation of greater things in this format. Express that all entities in which I interact with and which I have had no previous knowledge in this one day will be of this certain gender or will speak in a certain register, or will be from a certain country when I am on Facebook. Any of these concepts that you give yourself and try to invest yourself into that belief, you can see it come to fruition. You have created that reality in that moment. And the more that you create in smaller scales, the larger scales will become, the more that you will be able to see your own manifestational qualities and your own creatorship of your reality, then the more investment you can have into further manifestations. So start off small. The first person in which likes my Facebook post will be a female. And once you see this come to fruition, then you are able to say, the next five people in which I interact with will all be from this country. And when you see that manifest, you continue. If you desire to manifest the sandwich, one cannot usually in the Earth Collective start off with manifesting a sandwich within your lap 
without making it or without having someone bring it to you. You cannot manifest it out of thin air automatically. Yes, humans are capable of this, but there is a great deal of resistance within humanity to do this. So starting off small is always of the utmost important. First of all, you will express that if I desire a verbal intent to a friend, to a family member, that they will make me a sandwich and bring it to me. Then, the next one, going into a restaurant in which normally you would pay money to receive a sandwich, walk in and express, this is my favorite sandwich, I wish that you would give me one. And then they give you this without paying money. You must take incremental steps to see that what you are doing is taking foot seeing that what you are doing is working and seeing that your manifestational prowesses are truly there and being able to create each step will give you more confidence to invest more of the belief which will then in turn yield the same amount of results in which percentage you have invested initially into your experience. This is what we can suggest you taking small steps even if it is not based in making friends it will give you the proof that you need in order to invest more into yourself in that co-creational quality. Thank you. You are loved. Before we disconnect, we wish to express to all of you that in our connection with you in this day, as Treble Yutney has told many entities within the human collective, that when we are connecting and conversing, we are expressing ideas that we have never exchanged with your independent energy in each moment. As we do this, as we bring forward our own information, as you reflect with your questions and your interactions, this is a brand new energy. And as we co-create this energy together, we are able to experience more of ourselves as we are a part of one and a part of all that is. You are also a part of all that is and a part of oneness. So therefore, by receiving answers from us or receiving things that do not resonate with you are still a portion of you experiencing and expressing yourself outside of yourself in the way of interacting. With this connection that we have all had this day, we are very grateful for connecting to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank we you. bid you adieu Thank for this you. evening. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Arthur. We really appreciate you sharing all of uh, your knowledge and understanding, your love and compassion, and um, it is so wonderful that you could be with us today. I'm sure everyone... One moment. Thank you. All right, Council here. Hold on, please. All right, we are ready to begin the communication with all of you. As you know, we are Ryan Council here, and we work upon a spacecraft. Many of you have been wondering, are they angelic beings or are they space people? We are mainly, as you call, space people, but we are not people. As you know, us, some of us are very tall and some of us are small, and we come in many sizes and colors. This is why we are a council, because we like to represent uh, multiple different groups from different planets. Military systems, yes. Exciting to communicate with you all. As you know, we are learning from your questions as well. So it is an expansion taking place. We are ready for your questions. So it is. Oh, thank you so much, Orion Council, for being here with us. And we'll go ahead with our first question. Uh, we have a caller from the 361 area code. Who do we have with us this evening? Hello, this is Rayla. Hey, Rayla, how Hello. are you doing tonight? I am doing wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Orion Council. I have a question for you, please. Um, I am later in life. I'm <laughs> fixing to turn 60. I am a 24-7 caregiver for my um, adult daughter who is disabled. And so my question is this. My um, social life, so to speak, is pretty much confined to the Internet. Um, I do attend school, but also via the Internet. And so my question is, how can I best be of service at this time through the medium of the Internet? All right. Well, I'm Council here. As you know, you are loved by all that is. Let's listen to your question. 
many of us answering today. We have Lirans and we have Andromedans and many other beings that are all stage and sizes. And we want you to know that uh, part of this learning taking place has to do with the acceptance that humans are different. And we would encourage you to share on your on your computer screen with other humans that you are experiencing what it is like to uh, ex uh, experience your creation with someone who is different, you would call your friend different. And we say different because on your planet Earth, many people are saying this is normal and this is unique. And some of you are afraid of this concept of being strange or that you are left uh, without assistance. But we want to ask you to explain in your computer to other humans that uh, you are having an extension with your learning and it would be helpful for you to discuss this experience with others because they are wanting to share their experience but they are afraid that they would be considered strange and as one takes a step towards the truth and healing so it is uh how do you say it is uh parallels in your reality and many of you will say one well, council what a strange concept i thought we were speaking about reflections and you are speaking of parallels but uh, we want to say that for you specifically you will be witnessing beings who are paralleling your experience uh, we understand that our communication is sometimes strange and we want you to know that we do not feel left out because we are strange we feel included because this concept is uh, something that is being embraced by people such as yourself. And you are changing the reality of the concept. This is work coming in from a higher dimensional plane that you have been channeling. So we encourage you to communicate, communicate, and furthermore, communicate. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful answer, Orion Council. Thank you very much. And, and we also want to thank Rayla for calling in. With a beautiful question, we'll move to our next caller from the 717 area code. Who do we have with us this evening? 717, is that me? Uh, no, you are 352, the uh, 717 shifted right. off. Go ahead. Go ahead, Savita, with your question, and welcome to the show this evening. Thank you. So my call was taken by mistake. <laughs> Thank you. I like that mistake. <laughs> Never a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, my question is, uh, whatever comes up from my higher self. Actually, I got a reading yesterday, a little reading. I called in in the program, and they gave me a prediction. So um, uh, I want to see what comes up from my higher self for that. All right. One moment, please. Our understanding is that you are given a timeline, a probability, and furthermore, you are given advice indirectly. So we would encourage you to document the communication, and we are communicating about communication today. It is the main topic of this evening. And we would say that as you record what was said to you, you will notice that some of the words used for this, as you call it, prediction or probable timeline, as we would call it, the words are going to be understood in the future by yourself in a new fashion. And we have been encouraging many beings to document their, their messages from other humans as well as their own messages from higher selves because uh, your understanding changes constantly. Your understanding of why this was communicated to you is going to change. And you would say, one counsel, this is somewhat off topic because I want to know, is it true? Is it false? So let us go into your uh, question. If we were to say this is true, we would be polarizing the answer into one that is uh, 
that is uh, reinstating a past timeline into the future. We'd say this is inevitable, this is going to happen. Human beings on your planet Earth love this because they want to experience the past over and over again, and many have been involved in these concepts of repeating timelines, and many are quite obsessive about the idea of repeating timelines. But here we have a prediction that you have received, and you are so curious about the way it is going to unfold that perhaps you have not been sensing the reality unfold in front of your eyes, and we would encourage you to simply sit back, relax, and enjoy your ride because uh, the energies are wanting to expand your awareness of how these events take place. And you will be quite surprised when you allow yourself to simply run with the current. And we know that is a simple answer. Many of you are wanting to run counsel. If we were to bet a million dollars on your answer, we would lose because you are not answering the question. But we want you to know that uh, your probable reality is uh, most likely going to occur, but in a way that uh, you are satisfied with the results. And it may sound strange at this time, but in the future you will be more satisfied with the results than perhaps in your current perspective. So hopefully this outcome is one that is one of growth and uh, kindness towards yourself. Remember, all that matters is that you are loving who you are and you will find out about these and why they took place as you document them in you. Thank you, Orion Council. Wonderful and beautiful answer. And we'll move to our next call. And thank you to Sister Savita for calling in. We love your calls. And we are moving to the next caller. And this time we are going to take the 717 area code. 717, who do we have with us this evening? Hi, this is Rose. Hey, Rose. How are you doing tonight? Wonderful. How are you? Wonderful. You can go ahead and ask Orion Council whatever question you desire. Okay, thank you. Um, my question is, I'm in the process of writing a book, but I don't really feel like I'm writing a story that's coming to me. Can you tell me what's going on with this? All right. You have asked Orion Council, am I channeling, am I communicating with non-physical energies, or is it simply my imagination? And many of you have the option of uh, communicating with non-physical beings. However, many of you are saying, Run counsel, if I'm so special, then they must have chosen me for this. And they must appear in my room in these colors, and they must have this appearance, and they must speak these kind words to me because it will make me quite fearful. So our answer to you is uh, you have been communicating with non-physical. However, it is subtle, and the subtle energies you have been receiving are coming through your let us say the part of your brain that processes memory is being activated and you would perceive it as your own memory is coming back, but the beings working with you are triggering this response. And in addition to all of this creative energy you've been sensing, you are, you are healing yourself. And this is what we are sensing as the most important factor and why you are writing this is this is the healing taking place. The energies of healing include a process that is very complex, and as we document, as we have said, our theme of this evening is communication. And as you document your memories, you are channeling a process, and this is what the readers are sensing in your creation. They want to know a healing process, so remember to include how you came about uh, to where you are now. And if you were to include this in your book, it would be most helpful. Let your readers know how you came up with these ideas and what inspired you and what was your experience like before creating this work. We would, we would think that it would be most enjoyable to those reading your book because they want to know who you are. And uh, please do add this section into your written text. Thank you. Thank you, Orion Council. Uh, lovely, lovely answer. And thank you to Rose for calling in. A wonderful, wonderful question. 
Now, the next caller that we have is from the 111 area code. So this indicates that you are calling from a Skype telephone number. We don't have your originated area code, so we'll give you a minute to answer. Skype phone user, who do we have with us this evening? Hello? A Skype phone listener on the 111 area code? All right, we will go back to that number then. Um, right now we have a 973 area code. 973, who do we have with us this evening? Well, hello, hello. This is Krista's mother, Catherine, calling. Oh, Catherine, hello. How are you? <laughs> Hi, how are you? What a great show. I know, it's wonderful and beautiful. Yeah. And I'm a fan of Treb too, I have to say. I'm just calling to give uh, a <laughs> I am. So thank you, Rob, for sharing Treb with all you. of us. Thank um, you so I'm much. Just, you're so welcome. I'm just calling to say hello to my buddies, um, the Orion Council, and um I'm wondering if the same cast of characters is there um as when we were doing the book together, when Krista and I were doing the book together. So I, that's my quick question. Hello, Orion Council here. Who is this woman calling? Our channel is quite confused, and she feels that she recognizes the being, but she is not sure. Ugly, <laughs> observable humor. It is lovely <laughs> to communicate with you. Such a lovely being you are, yes? Hello, friends. <laughs> It is lovely to communicate with you. It has been a while, has it not? Yes, it has been quite some time, quite some time. Yes, we feel it is about time that we give an update on who is communicating. As you might recall, you are communicating with the Orion Council beings located in the Beetlejuice area, but we want to give you some new knowledge. And... Some of the beings working for Orion Council are not simply in the Beetlejuice area. Some of us do travel to other star systems, yes? Would you say Imagine. that you agree with us? I do agree with you. All right. If you were to travel with us to another star system, there is a great big galaxy that is not too far away. And it takes a lot from an Earth human to travel to this distant place. But we want you to know that you have traveled to this galaxy. It is not the one you are in at the moment. And we want you to know that uh, once you uh, came back from your travels, you were accompanied by a new race of extraterrestrial beings. And... One of these beings was such a loving being that it now is a part of the Orion Council. And part of your work was to introduce this being to the Orion Council. And it is not time yet to reveal the race and the color of hair and the style of eyes, as you humans are so interested in knowing. What is more important to know is that you have done a tremendous act of service for Orion Council. And we are now expanded in our understanding of another galaxy. Well, I'm delighted to hear that. <laughs> Bravo, Orion Council. All right. We feel that uh, there are many others who want to communicate with Orion Council, but we want you to know that you are loved beyond measure. And our channel here is so amazed at this experience this evening that she is... Uh, somewhat out of her body to the right, and she is nodding her head at us and saying, well done, Run Council. I agree with your explanation of what my mother has been doing in non-physical, yet she has been physical in another dimension. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. And thank you, Rob, so much. Thank you, too, very much. Thank you, too, very much, Catherine. And sorry, I did mute... The mic, as is the procedure after questions are asked, and that's why the answer didn't come back to you very quickly, Orion Council, and, and I do apologize for that. But it's a great pleasure to have you, uh, not only as Chris's mother, but as as a follower of her wonderful channeling 
and also any friend of Treb's a friend of mine. So thank you for calling. And we are going to try to take our next caller back at the 111 area code. This is a Skype telephone. We'll try it one more time. Are you there with a Skype uh, phone caller? Hello? Skype phone caller? All right. Uh, I'll give you a couple more seconds here to answer. If you're waiting on the phone, you can say yes, and it might be you. All right. No dice for the 111. We might try back later in the evening. We will go to um, the 917 area code. 917. Who do we have with us this evening? Nine one seven, area code. Who do we have with us this evening? All right. Well, then we'll move it on down the line. We have a seven zero eight area code. Seven zero eight. Who do we have with us this evening? This is Magic. Magic. Hello? How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing very well. Thank you. You are yes, good. You're on the air, and you have Orion Council to yourself. I have a question for Orion Council. We are ready for your question. As you know, you are a creator. Thank you. You are My welcome. My question is: I am very connected with the native tribe, the Apache tribe, and I. I do their prayers every morning, and I want to know why am I so connected with this uh, Native American tribe. All right. Are you sure you want to know the answer? Because it will be a positive one. Yes. We have terrible humor, by the way, everyone. We have a completely horrid sense of humor. So let us end our friend here who is wanting to know why is it that I am communicating these words through my essence to the world, although I feel perhaps no one is listening. I feel guided. I am loving this energy, and I want to, I want to express my appreciation for perhaps beings who are no longer surrounding me as they have done in many lifetimes. We want you to know that the group you are inquiring about is not simply a group of beings that belong to a culture. They are an energy collective who have known you for many lifetimes and many lifetimes. And many of you already are familiar with the concept of groups reincarnating multiple times. And some of you would say, oh, I'm counsel, you are just saying that the multiple timeline probabilities mean that we are having existences that are paralleled with one another in human form. So is it that we have reincarnated with the same people? What if they are in non-physical? And what does all of this mean for me? Because I have to pay my rent and I have to eat my food. And I do not know if I have time for all of this uh, extraterrestrial knowledge. Let us explain part of the reason why you have connected to this specific group. Some of the members of this group are in your life at this time. It is a way for you to reconnect yourself to not only positive memories of your incarnation with this group of beings, but also you are, in a sense, acting out past lifetimes where you were involved in healing. And this group has reincarnated, has reincarnated once again. Some are in non-physical, but the energy that you are channeling is that of healing. And as we said, the theme of this evening is communication. And you would say, one oh, counsel, I'm communicating to myself. And this is strange. I wish to know more about the reason why I feel love doing this. And the love that you feel is because those beings, whether in physical or in another dimension, are responding to your call. And you are feeling this in the very soul of your body. You know that they hear you. And the next question will be around counsel. What do I do about this? 
well. When you send a call to another being, whether it is in physical form or in another dimension, whether the being is here or in, let us say, fourth, fifth dimension or beyond, you are asking them to give you knowledge. You are asking them to remind you who you are. And you are also sending healing energy to them without knowing. As you continue to do this, some of the beings will reconnect and they will perhaps contact you in their own way. And we believe that within a few months, you are connected to at least four of them. So if you were to continue this ritual for five months, and we don't believe that you have to do it every morning, but if you continue for five months with the intention that you are calling to you, your soul family, you could say, they will contact you. Four very important beings, two females and two males, although some of them would consider themselves quite androgynous, but in the physical form, two females and two males will enter your life. And it is because you are expanding the molecular structure, you are oscillating at a faster vibration and therefore attracting to yourself the love that you are wanting to experience. So please, friends, continue what you are doing. You have done this in the past. It's just because you are a healer and have been in your incarnation with this group of, uh, as you call them, Native Americans. It was beautiful to give you this knowledge. It was an honor. And we see you as successful and meeting up with your soul family. Thank you. Thank you, Orion Council. And thank you, Magic, too, for the uh, wonderful question. Um, do we have time to take one more caller, Orion Council? Indeed, we have time for one or two, however you choose. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have someone who's been uh, waiting patiently for quite some time at the 602 area code. 602, who do we have with Arizona. us this evening? Hello? 602? Um, 602 with the prefix of 803. Did you have a question this evening? That's me. That's you. Oh, no, Did you I... have a question for the Orion oh, Council this uh... evening? Oh, my goodness. Um, I didn't know that I pressed to call in, but yes, that is me. Um, okay. If you don't have a question, that's fine. We can move to the next person. We understand uh, uh, Blog Talk has been doing a little funny things where they're unmarking people who are marked and marking people who are unmarked, so sorry about uh, that. Okay. Is there a question no that problem. you have? Um, I can just ask very, very quickly. Um, I do uh, have a question. Um, one of my highest excitements is interacting with my horses, and I'm wondering if there's any way. I know they are second-density um, creatures, and there are some differences, obviously, between them and myself, but I do feel very, very connected, especially with one of them, and I'm just wondering if there is any um, deeper connection uh, between myself and and uh, one of my one of my horses. Yes, there is a major connection. Are you wanting to know what you should do about it, or are you wanting to know about your past incarnation with this being? I'm more interested in uh, the, the past uh, relationship with this being. All right. The reason we say past experience is because uh, you recognize a being that you love so much, it is because you recognize them. And when we speak about should have and should not and future terms or agreements or contracts, we are in a more creative imagery. When we are thinking about our relationships with those we love, it is more of a healing, it is more of a, of a solution to, let us say, how you can deal with other beings. Uh, while in this incarnation, you see, we are quite complex in our answer today. What we are wanting to say is that your relationship with this being is helping you to access memories in order to deal with those in physical form in your life. So because you have connected with this being for healing and for reconnecting with those you love, including soul family, you are remembering times when you are both in another star system known as the Pleiades, all right? 
And uh, we will tell you more information, but we must ask your permission. Do we ask permission to tell you about your incarnation with your horse friend in the Pleiades? Yes, you certainly do have my permission. All right. The being you are inquiring about has the ability to take on different forms. In Pleiadian star system, there are many, there are many planets. So why right, we do not feel it is important to pinpoint which one, but the being you are working with has taken on several forms because on your planet Earth, many believe that animals are beneath humans and you are here to show humanity that uh, some of our animals are more evolved than human beings and we think that you would perhaps laugh at our answer because we know this and because you have seen the intelligence of animals. But in your previous, uh, or you could say simultaneously, say previous incarnation, this being took on several forms and has shown you the beauty of the different forms available to its spirit. And you are remembering this being showing you the beauty of a different form, and so you are fascinated by this form. And this form is fascinating for many humans at this time on this planet because the horse has the ability to sustain itself in ways that humans have not yet understood. There is a mechanism in the horse that preserves its own species because it is loyal to its species. And if you were to think of horses, they do not uh, turn on one another. They do not betray one another. Horses are very much linked to their females, and they are very much aware that the female can change its mind, but they are accepting of it, and that is what preserves the species. Is that an interesting concept or what? That is a very, very beautiful concept. Indeed. We have enjoyed this transmission immensely. Thank you for allowing Orion Council to communicate with the loving beings who have been participating. We see many of you in the non-physical, and we see your colors, and we hear your music, and we also want you all to remember that when you are in contact with your family in another dimensional Space, you could say, because we do have space and we do have time, but it is different where we are located. You must remember that uh, we do have the ability to send you knowledge through the veil, and we have the ability to hear your questions, and we have the uh, awareness of what your experience is. So it is somewhat transparent on your part, and you say, Ron Council, that is not fair. You are watching us, but we cannot watch you. We are very angry because of it. And we want you all to remember that you chose this experience of separation, and many of you are unlearning separation, and many of you say, Ron Council, we are not smarter than you because we are unlearning illusion. And we say, indeed, you are smarter than many of us here. This is why we communicate with you, because we can learn from your experience. So it is. That is very, very beautifully said. And I am amongst all the callers and listeners tonight and all who will be listening in the future archive are very, very grateful for your presence, your love, and your information that brought forward tonight. I want to thank you personally. Um, on the behest of our network and show, and also as a human being who enjoyed every minute of your communication. We want to communicate another time, but as you know, we have the dream space available to us, and we feel many of you will receive messages from us there. So it is. Thank you again, and thank you all for uh, whoever called in, whoever listened, Whoever will be listening, thank you all for supporting the show. And when you come back to us, Crystal, let us know. Hello. How are you? This is Lakesh. Oh. Yes. Thank you for coming, Lakesh. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me. I am enjoying having being coming here. It is such a nice place. I enjoy the warmth of the people. Yes. Uh, we're enjoying you two very much, and we are so happy to be here. Um, if it is possible to share something 
with the collective listeners that are listening today and will be listening in the archives at a later point, anything that you feel is, is pertinent or important for us to know, we would love to, to hear what you have to share. Ah, I was just thinking as I was coming through that the there are so many people connected to this. I mean, I see all the different people connected by by way of Skype and TVs and monitors and telephones and things of that nature. I would like them all to become connected in their spirits because that is important. You are of like spirit, are you not? And then you become even a greater... You feel humanity greater. You feel the love of each other greater when you can share the connection. Let yourself connect. Let it be something that is moving out from you and not always bringing things into you, but moving out from you is a beautiful thing. And some of you have learned this lesson very well. And some of you are still learning it now. Because there are so many kinds of connections, mental connections, spiritual connections, emotional connections, connect, connect, connect. But you see when your light connects, when you move the light and connect as a body of light workers, how powerful that can be to the earth. Because it overshadows much darkness, much more than you could ever imagine. And you, I know you have many questions about this. And some of you are new to spirituality, and some of you are new to the thoughts that aliens are even spiritual, or that they can even teach humanity anything, or even communicate with them well. But here we are. So that is what I wanted to say. I wanted to say, please connect with one another, because you will find that your loneliness, some of you are lonely. Some of you are feeling like there is no one like you around. But this is an inclusive network of people, of light workers, inclusive, diverse, loving. Bring that in. Bring that into your thought pattern. Let them resonate with you in a way that you know that you can be with them and not be afraid of who you are. Be who you are in your true perfect self because that is the only way that you can be an example to the world. You must be yourself. You must be the fire of God that is within you. That is the only way that you will make a difference. Do you understand? You may make a difference in the financial world. You may make a difference in the music world or the artistic world. But when you want to make a difference, With fellow man, you must be yourself. You must resonate who you really are. And then they will understand the beauty of the fire of the God that's within you. That is all I have to say for now. Is there any questions? Thank you so much, Lakesh. And we will bring in our our very first caller for the first question. And thank you again. Uh, 512 area code. Who do we have with us this evening? Hi, this is Eric. Hello, Hello Eric. Eddie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? How's everybody? Doing great. Go five? ahead and ask your question. Yes, so uh just having a lot of synchronicity with uh, a little known small island called Mauritius. I just want to know if you could tell me anything about that. What's my synchronicity with this? With what? Uh, the islands of Mauritius? Yes. Lots of synchronicity. I see. Because, one moment, please, and I will let you know just in a second, because there is a connection happening right now between you and the islands of Mauritius. There Woo-hoo! is someone there that you have had a past life with, and there is something there that you resonate with very highly, a possession that you had lost many years ago in a past life, and it has much meaning to you. And right now, this person has it. And that is why you are resonating with them. And also, this was one of your past life homelands. And you will find that you will resonate with it all of your life until you go there and find this object. You Thank you, Ash, for that. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll reconnect, Derek. I apologize. Uh, so you're re recommending I do go there? If you can. But it is not necessary. There is just a strong connection with you and an object that someone has. And you will go right to it. It will be something that you'll be drawn to. It is not something that will take a long time to find. But yes. And also, this was one of your past lives. And so you will find it very familiar there. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lakesh. Thank you, Eric. And I apologize, Lakesh. When you ask a question, a second question to them or, or a response, I usually mute the caller right after they're done with their initial question so that you're voice can be heard better, so it will take a few seconds of delay if you need them to respond to something. So thank you, Eric, and, and thank you, Lakesh. And the next caller that we have will come from the 413 area code. 413, who do we have with us this evening? Hi, this is Jay. Hello? Hey, how are Hello? you doing tonight? Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, hi, Lakesh. Um, will you please connect directly to my energy? I can do that. Is there a specific reason why you would like this to happen? Yes, I'd like to ask you the, about my life. Um, it's a little up in the air right now, and, and I would just like to ask you to communicate messages from my natural guidance or yes, my I can spirit. Do that. spirit. Oh, thank you so let, much. Let me tell you something right now. I can I can connect with you right now and tell you something very interesting. Uh, you right now, you are living in a little bit more of a fourth dimensional atmosphere than you have in the past. You are not relating to the third dimension like you usually do. Is this correct? Well, I, I have to ask. I'm sorry. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And so this is what I would have you to do. I need you to feel my energy now. Hold on. And I will not ask any more questions because that is the only one that I needed to ask but you will feel my energy. What is happening with your energy is that you are starting a new journey of spiritual guidance. Also, that you need to be more grounded right now because the energy that you're feeling from the first dimension, fourth dimension is not being grounded properly, and so that brings things up in the air and it makes things confusing. If you ground down through Mother Earth, but let me give you some energy right now so that your fourth dimensional energy is not so wild and crazy. It is moving around in, in a very erratic way. So therefore, you will start to ground down through Mother Earth, bring the energy up through your feet to your heart chakra, so that the fourth dimensional energy from the universe can come down and meet it at the heart chakra. This is where they will balance. You, you do not have to answer that. But yes, it will start to balance you out and you will feel third dimension again. However, in, on top of that, you will start to understand the fourth dimensional confusion that you're going through right now. Understand that what is happening to you is a spiritual relocation, and you may pull that down through your uh, root chakras and through the grounding parts of the, what I am speaking of, and you will be more balanced. Your chakras will light up because that is what I'm going to do for you. When, I, when you feel my energy, you will be also feeling it through the chakras. And this is what I am going to do for you, and this will change your outlook. It will not any longer be very, very confusing in the fourth dimensional area, but be grounded down through Mother Earth so that the information from third dimension and fourth dimension can be understandable and related to yourself and others. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful information, and thank you so much for that, Lakesh. We have a, a question that's in the chat room, and we're going to ask that. Um, it comes from Stargazer27, and Stargazer27 asks, in the middle, or in the dream state, I connected with someone from the Pleiades, and the Yael. Also, I feel a strong connection to blue beings. 
What was the message being delivered to me? What is my connection to those beings? Well, you've had past lives on other planets and other worlds, and so therefore they have made their attempt to contact you and let you know that you are welcome in their spiritual lives as well, close to them. They want to contact you. They want you to be aware of them. They want you to feel the closeness to them that you once felt. And now they are just letting you know that blue beings, like myself, however, these blue beings that you are are connecting with are not from my species exactly. They are Pleiadian, but they are a blue Pleiadian that is a taller species. And they are connecting with you to let you know that you do have a star family right now. And that is important. Do you know why? Because right now you are going through something that you need some support from somewhere other than the third dimension. And they are there to help you in support of your spiritual growth, in your spiritual uplifting, because you've been going through something low, something a little darker perhaps. I'm not saying that's necessarily true, but that is the the thing that I am seeing, that you are moving, you need connections from higher dimensions to help you through this uh, third-dimensional dilemma because you do not relate to the third-dimensional answers. Do you understand that? Don't answer that. But anyway, I am telling you that uh, this will help you, and it will just open your eyes that you have other support other than just third-dimensional beings. There's other support for you. And this will give you the confidence to move through what you are moving through now. Thank you for talking to me because you do have many connections from other worlds. And let me tell you why. This world was an experiment for you. You have not been on Earth many, many, many times. Not This is not your first time, but this is not... You do not like the experience of third dimension very much at times. And so they are here to help you through that. Does that make sense to you? You don't have to answer. I'm just being rhetorical. But I see that in you, that that your third dimensional experiences are not often understood. And even though they are lessons to learn, please know that they are lessons to learn and gain that information So that when you go to the oversoul, that you will have that information or they will have to show it to you many times so you learn it. But you do have much support from the stars. Beautiful, beautiful, Akesh. Thank you again so much. I want to remind the callers that if you have a question for Lakesh, you can call in at 347-308-8788. We've got a whole line and I doubt we'll get through them all. So maybe if you want to ask your question on our chat room, feel free to do that if you're listening to the online link. The chat room is right below where the audio will be coming from. So we will go to our next caller at the 360 area code, 360. Who do we have with us this evening? Hello, this is Lori. Hello, Lori. How are you doing this evening? I'm okay. (laughs) Um, Hello, Lori. Go ahead and ask your Hi. question. Well, I was wondering if I I could ask a question about my upcoming court date that I have coming up on the eighth uh, of June. We cannot tell the future unless we go there. However, I can tell you this: that you are very apprehensive about it, and there yes. is something there that makes you very frightened. I can even hear it in your voice. I think probably everyone can. But, so that is not really a very big miracle. But I can sense that this has this will affect your life greater than than you let on. And let me tell you this about it. If you will pray and let yourself go into that situation, you will understand what the answer is going to be. You will actually know the outcome of this court case, don't you? I feel Hello? like he, I feel like he's going to get away with stuff. And that really bothers you very much. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Let me comfort you by saying nobody gets away with stuff. Okay. Not really. There will be repercussions and there will be things that 
Because when you have karma, karma is with you always. So if this person gets away with stuff mm-hmm. on that is hurting you, they will not get away with it for long. But let me add something to that. This person who is getting away with stuff, has he always gotten away with stuff? I'm sorry, I have to ask. I, I don't know. Um, I think he probably has. He's a really good liar. But I, I notice he has a long record on the court in the court system. Let me do it this way then. Let's brighten your soul. Let's bring out all the beautiful things within you and stop bringing the... the uh, the negative entities and energies to the surface. Because you know what? Mm -hmm. This is what's going to make a difference. It will be your outlook on it that will make the difference. You will have to bring yourself to a place of understanding, a place of perfection. You You are the perfect person that you are. And that no matter what happens, your example in the courtroom will be perfect. People will see that you are someone to be respected, love, and and bring light to the room. When you enter it, ask that the room be filled with a positive energy. Ask that the room be filled with integrity. Ask that the room be filled with honesty and wisdom. And this is the best you can do. Because there are other things working for him that are not working for you, but you must take all the positive energy you can and let it work for you. Do you understand that? I I know you cannot answer because you're on mute, but I hear you shaking your head yes. So I will let you know this will make a difference. If you can bring that positive energy out of you, if you can... If you can do a meditation intended for all the positive things possible to happen, this will work in your favor because there is nothing greater than the light, nothing greater than the truth, nothing greater than the positive energy that you will bring there. And you will be able to change the atmosphere of the room because you are in the right. Thank you very much, Lakesh. It's very powerful. Um, A lot of the times, us as humans have to see that we do hold a large amount of power going into those types of situations that are scary. And thank you so much for reminding all of us of that. I have a next question will be from the chat room. It's from Balance Beauty RX, and it asks, if um oh i'm sorry it asks what is the common thread that runs through this group tonight gathering for this certain communication and are we all connected oh that is a wonderful question i love questions like this because i get to show off a little yes there is a common thread of all of you and yes there is energy moving through all of you tonight there is a connection you know what it is? It is the connection of human decency, love, and the desire to move forward in your actions on earth, to become important people, the curiosity that binds you all together tonight, and that's one thing that does bind you all together, is your curiosity for the truth, for for the brightness of the light, for the spirituality of the earth. That is a common thread. And some of you want to find wisdom or knowledge that might point you toward an understanding or a proof. You're looking for proof that it is all real. And you know what? That common thread runs through the world. And many of you are experiencing now that truth. Yes, I am looking for answers. Yes, I am looking for spirituality. Yes, I am looking for the truth, the proof, and the realization that everything that I am hearing now is actually possible. Let me tell you this. 
You are growing daily. Your fourth dimensional energy is empowered a little bit farther ahead every day. You are not moving backwards unless you choose to. You are not standing still either. You are always moving forward. Remember that. Keep that in mind. Even on your darkest day, if you are not choosing to go backwards, you are still moving forward, even in your baddest day, because that is your intent, not to move backwards. Even though you may feel sad, blue, or whatever, you can shed that also, but you are moving forward in the light. You are moving forward in connection to one another, and you are finding your destiny little by little. And your fourth dimensional energy has guided you here tonight to hear these things for a reason. There might be just one thing that you hear tonight that makes a difference, but it will be something that sticks with you. It will be something that you learn and will help you grow in a much faster way or a little faster way. I am just saying there is a common thread and it is the light and the spirit that is within us all because we all have the God spirit. We all have the flame of God within our chest, within our soul. And so therefore, when you feel that and acknowledge that that is connected one to another, you all have it and you can all connect with it. It is a beautiful thing. Thank you so much, Lakesh. That's a beautiful thread for us to share is that love and connection, curiosity. It's what makes us human and makes us wonderful. We have time for a couple more callers. So we will go to the 832 area code. 832, who do we have with us this evening? Hi, this is Chris live from I-90. Talking on his head. 10 set, by the way. All right, Chris. Well, we're glad to have you here. Uh, I'm going to hand you over to Lakesh and your question at hand. Okay, hello. first of all, I, hello, hi, Lakesh. Um, first of all, I'd like to send positive energy to that re, that previous caller for her court date. And um, I question, my question, and my question is, is uh, of course, just like the previous caller, there's a lot of things going up in the air right now for me, and uh, I'm just wondering. I'm making a big move to the state of Texas, and I'm wondering. How how that is affecting me as far as my spirituality goes, is it in the positive direction, my growth, and how is that related to human colony as well? Thank you. Those are a lot of questions, but I have an answer. First of all, this is something that has resonated with you, and so your move is very positive. You are moving in a place where you feel it's a positive connection for you, and you know. Texas has many positive connections there. I do not know which part of Texas you are moving to, but there are many spiritual and wonderful people there. Also, your connection to human colony will be as safe and sound as ever before. You will continue to go to the colonies. You will continue to be part of whatever happens with the colonies. And, and they love you very much. You realize that I am not attached to the colonies directly, but I do hear about them all the time and know a great deal about them. However, I see that you have some apprehension because there will be little or no people that you know down there. Let me tell you, you will make friends fast. You will make friends very quickly and they will be good friends. Not that you will lose the old ones, but your move is positive and your enlightenment will grow there. Your spirituality will grow there. You are on a journey right now, and this is part of it. And you feel that within you, that resonates within you, that you are moving towards something. Of course, there's always a fear of the unknown. Heavens, even fourth-dimensional people, feel the fear of the unknown at times. However, do not worry. There are many that are with you spiritually, and I will be with you spiritually, and you will be doing wonderfully there. It might take a little time to, what is the word, fit in or be part of or attune yourself to, but you are a wonderful person and they will see your light. You are free to be yourself, and I feel that you are happy with who you are, 
and that you are resonating very well about this trip. Even though you say you're up in the air about it, I believe that you know this is the right move. Wonderful, wonderful, Akesh. Thank you so much for that. And thank you, Chris, for the wonderful question. Um, and bless you on your journey to Texas. There are a bunch of great people there, just like Akesh said. Um, even one of our former hosts, Roxanne Swainhart, a good person, she's down there. So a lot of really good things can happen in that area. Uh, we'll go ahead to the next caller and our last caller for the evening at 2... Zero two area code. Who do we have with us this evening? Two zero two. Hi, hi. Sorry, I thought I. Hey. You. Good evening. This That's is all right. <laughs> Hello to you both. All right. Hello, and go ahead and ask your question then to Lakesh. Thank you. I have um, two related questions. The first is. How do do my guides and my higher self interact in working with me? And I recently learned the names of my three primary guides, mm -hmm. and um, I was wondering if there's a name that I can refer to my higher self as. I see. I see that you. I see that you have not really talked to them very much. That you were just yep. introduced to them just recently. What did you say your name was? Stephanie. Stephanie. Hello, yes, I'm glad to speak to you. And I will tell you how your higher self and guides are both doing. However, they must usually the higher self will introduce himself to you when the time is correct, when he needs to speak to you, or when you're in the midst of a meditation. But I do not think that you meditate very often, do you, or at all? I uh, sometimes I'm more consistent than others. I'm really just lear training myself how to meditate. I haven't had any formal w learning about it, but uh, and so I think for that partly that yes. reason I'm not consistent. Yes, I understand that. This is I would like you to start a little bit more a serious meditation with intention. Intention to learn who your spirit guides are and how they are helping you, because each spirit guide helps in a different way. I can tell you that your spirit guides are just learning to communicate with you, just learning to talk to you, and you are starting a spiritual journey as well. And you are just now wondering if you're doing things the right way. But things will become more consistent with you, but you must be more consistent with your meditations. Let me tell you why consistency in your meditations will help you be consistent with your spirituality and consistent with your life. You see, third dimension depends on a certain amount of consistency. And, and right now, you do not feel very consistent. You think things are floating around, things are moving here and there. It is a matter of just um, getting yourself in line and getting your heart understanding that you are your perfect self. You do not have to change a great deal to be a spiritual person. You just have to be who you are in yourself and resonate with the fire that's within you, the spirit that's within you. Do not try to fit in with all these other things that you, you really don't resonate with. There are some things that you are involved with, in, with in, right now with some people that just are, does, does not resonate. You know, it doesn't res, res, res all, you know what I'm saying. But anyway, you are on a spiritual journey, and you can be very bright light. You can be a very bright light, and I see that. But bring yourself to some di discipline with your uh, meditations. The connection here is getting bad. But, yes, come to your own resonation with your the way you're doing things. and. It will come to pass that with intent you will move forward a great deal and you will understand that you will be able to speak to your spirit guides and to your higher self at some point whenever you intend to do so and the time is right. Because you must 
be able to bring the fire out to include them in the conversation. I'm sorry, that was a bit... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying that was a bit rough because I went through a little bit of a disconnect there for a second. But I think I got the message through. Yes, I absolutely did. It was very beautifully put. Um, there's. A, I know we said that would be the last question. I have one question for you, if you're willing to take it. That only requires a one-word answer from you. Um, oh. One of the people wrote in on the chat room, and are, if you're interested, I'll ask you that question. Of course. What density do you come from? Well, they call it, you see, okay, that is a trick question. Let me tell you why. Because everyone has their own opinion of how the densities are. There are some people that would call my density fifth density. Some would call it fourth density. But it is a matter of definition. I myself call it fourth density, but it is higher than the fourth density that you achieve through your fourth density awakening on third dimension. That sounds a little complicated. However, I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. If I were to do a dimension, uh, an outline of dimensions, it would be different for each perception of those people who understand dimensions because you must understand it in the trueness of what it is. And that can be in more than one definition. Does that make sense to you? It absolutely does. Um, as you are aware, I channel two beings more than I do the others, and that's Treb and Ardiff. And Treb has a very beautiful way to explain the densities, but when you ask Ardiff, his system is completely different. Ardiff sees three densities in physical, um, then several in non-physical, while Treb will see six in physical. So it, it's absolutely a matter of perception, and I completely understand it. Probably more than the average person would just because of my time I've spent with studying that. Yes. And densities are tricky because you can be in more than one density at a time depending on your definition. So, and definitely on your perception of what the density should be like. So, yes, you understand it very well. And it is a tricky question, and it really actually doesn't matter at this point. It will matter to you one day when you move through the dimensions. Then you will have to be more specific when you name it for yourself. You see, you must understand your perception of the densities to be able to make it work for you. But you do not have to understand everyone's perception of dimensions. <laughs> Ab it absolutely, Lakesh. Go yes. ahead. I'm sorry to have interrupted. Oh, no, that is fine. I was just laughing and making a joke. Continue. We we love jokes here, absolutely. And and I, I understand completely um, what you mean. It's, it's all about perception. And for the most part, um, a new being that I brought through that many people have channeled, Metatron, that being itself um, would say that it doesn't matter where you're at. It matters where you're at where your emotions and exactly. mentality are. Yes. So we understand this very well. I want to personally thank you, Akesh, for coming on to this show and on the behest of all the listeners tonight and all the times listened in the archives for every bit of energy and words and information and wisdom and love and all of those beautiful things that you shared with us tonight. From the bottom of my heart, I want to give you my gratitude. Thank you very much. I hope it was helpful to, to most people that were listening, and I hope it was correct information, because sometimes the third dimension gets hard to read, but I think that it was pretty true. It is beautiful. It resonated greatly, and everyone found their truth tonight, and I appreciate that very greatly. Very good. I love you very much, and your planet is doing very well. There is much war on one side of it, but... It will come to an end one day. It has to. Well, I love you too, and you are absolutely right. Uh, things kind of get out of control before they get into control, and the more fight we see inside of ourselves, the more we see it outside too. So 
the sentiment is is beautiful, and we love you too very, very much. Thank you so much, Lakesh, for joining. Namaste, my dear friend. Namaste to you. Peace on earth.